Black Adam, an immortal man of indomitable will, is haunted by centuries of dark deeds, thereby the usurper of the DC hierarchy must transfer his powers to a worthy successor, who will redeem Adam's legacy and defend their ancestral homeland of Kondok. Black Adam issue number one brings us the return of comic book writer Christopher Priest. Now, Christopher Priest as a writer has had many successes throughout his career, whether it's his work on Black Panther, his work on Death's Joke during DC Rebirth, the man has definitely contributed a lot to both DC and Marvel. And here he is back at it with DC and is bringing his attention to the complex character of Black Adam. Now, unless you don't know this, Priest likes to include a lot of politics in his storytelling, whereas in other books, he comes off like he has a message to say. That's not the case here. As many of you know, Black Adam is the ruler of Kondok. But obviously, when you're a ruler, there's so much more to it than just sitting on a throne. Every now and then, you may have to attend global hearings, meetings regarding state investments, and you'll have to know the status quo of the geopolitical landscape. Now, all that boring stuff that no one likes to do is integrated very well into Black Adam's story. And through this method, it showcases Black Adam's personality. Every scene featuring Black Adam in his human form and not in his ass kicking, you know, let's go drink beer attire, he comes off like a sarcastic man, yet someone who despite how bored and tedious he finds his stuff to be, he still has a deep knowledge of global affairs, which is good. And it's important because we know that Black Adam, though he may have an attitude, he still cares. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the actual plot, it's very quiet. And at times, it's a little bit confusing. We're very much left in the dark throughout most of the issue, which is obviously by Christopher Priest's design. But we're not given a lot of context as to why everything is happening. We're just sort of thrown into the situation and we're sort of left to figure out, okay, what's going on? But that's cool if you're doing a book like, like for Batman or Superman, but when most of the audience probably doesn't really know who Black Adam is, like, like how we know those characters, it's kind of like, what are you doing? Maybe you should like set some of the stuff up just a little bit, you know? And we're not given to any context as to why everything is happening. We don't even know the circumstance or the reason why Black Adam's body is suffering from a plague. All we know is that it has something to do with Black Adam punching something of the Zod's making. It's very vague. And so I'm not saying that you as the writer, you know, you have to give all the answers in the first issue, but at least give some clues and just a little bit of context to what's happening. Instead of understanding the reason or at least a small part of it, the book decides to put all that on the back burner and instead focusing on a new character, the descendant of Black Adam. Now, Malik was a funny character and his presence brought a lot of levity to the book. And so when it comes to Malik and Black Adam, I am curious to see where the relationship will go and how each of them will learn from one another. However, the character's tone at times, it didn't match the tone that the book was already providing. A lot of Malik's interactions, they felt very abrupt and the conversations felt very disrupted. It wasn't bad by any means, but Malik's segment felt a lot like a different comic book altogether. And that's just something as a writer, you really don't want your audience to feel. Now, on a more positive note, the book's art is incredible. It's badass, and every scene with Black Adam as Black Adam in his suit was a feast for the eyes. Raphael Sandoval manages to inject and bring palpable voltage to the book's appearance. And because of that, it holds intrigue. Overall, if you're someone who wanted a lot of Black Adam's typical brand of explosive action and punching dudes in the face, you probably will be disappointed with this issue. Obviously, Priest is setting things up, and I'll give him the benefit of doubt since, you know, that's a common theme with most of his books. However, the issue was very abrupt with its telling, and it didn't leave a lot of intrigue to ensue the reader to pick up the second issue. I just, I wish we were given a lot more context to what was happening, and the way scenes trans transitioned was very sporadic. Hopefully, the book will find its footing in the upcoming issues. Black Adam issue number one gets a 7.5 out of 10. Our story begins like any Black Adam story should, in a United States Senate building, months prior to the death of the Justice League. And it's here where we have Tef Adam, aka Black Adam, who's in his regular human form, and he's testifying against Egypt and the countries that are lending their support towards investing in their, in their defense budget against Kondok. However, as the Senate demands answers, Black Adam's thoughts are dwelling on a different time, and thus, that is immediately where we transition to, that being the night before where Black Adam is seemingly fighting against Darkseid. Now, we don't know the reason as to why they're fighting. All we know is that Black Adam is kicking Darkseid's ass. And while Adam is doing that, he sort of gives us a history lesson about who he is. Because remember, Black Adam, he's been around forever. 
throughout the years of him ruling Kondok, various conquerors have attempted to seize his country. But every time, Black Adam would warn his enemies that they would fail. And indeed they did. And so after listing a bunch of names of actual real people whom Adam has bested, Black Adam provides a, a fist full of justice with the power of Shazam. Now after mortally wounding his foe, Black Adam's hand, the one he punched him with, doesn't look too good. It looks sick, and it looks like it's dying from disgust. But regardless of that, after transforming himself back into Black Adam attire, the anti-hero continues to beat the crap out of his foe. Thus, he ends up killing Darkseid. Now, upon seeing his master fall right before him, the sod immediately tries to dip. He's like, I don't want any part of this. Peace. But Adam grabs him by the throat. But what's interesting here is that we learn that whomever Black Adam had just defeated, it wasn't the real dark side. Because this fight was way too easy for that to be the real dark side. Therefore, he accuses the sod of this being one of his illusions and demands to know the, the real location to where his master truly is. Switching back to the present, inside the Senate hearing chamber, Black Adam has basically had enough of, of the hearing. He's just way too tired and too bored to hear all this political crap that the people are trying to say to him. And so after dishing out some facts on what's being spent towards Egypt's border protection security and whatever else deems to be unjust, the congressman who's leading this hearing orders Adam to sit back down. But Adam, in his own nice way, is like, what will you do? Literally, dude, you can't stop me. Heck, before your next breath, I could easily kill everyone in this room. Which is why I assume that's the reason John's here. Now, the people don't know what he's talking about. But that's when one of the politicians from behind revealed himself to be Martian Manhunter. For Martian Manhunter was here in case Adam decided to, you know, lose his cool. Because basically this shows us that though Adam is a ruler of a country, many surrounding countries and even those affiliated with the Justice League don't trust Kondak's stability because of Black Adam's character. He's way too intense. And so after leaving the Senate building somewhere else in Washington, D.C., we have ourselves a murder scene with yellow tape, cops blocking roads, you know, the basic needs to showcase a murder. Now, it's here where we meet a guy named Shep, and he works for the State Department for Kondok. Now, once he gets past the yellow tape, it's here where he's able to recognize who the person was. Shep knows who the murder victim is, and so he quickly calls up Black Adam, who's currently taking the subway, and he informs Adam that the one that one of his political rivals, a guy named Shakur Nassar, has been killed. And apparently, this guy was a leader of the reform movement, and it's hinted through their conversation that, that there are rumors surrounding the man's wife and Black Adam. Now, Black Adam is sure to tell Shep that whatever these rumors are regarding Nassar's wife are not true. But regardless, Adam should probably call her, as is the advice given to him by Shep. Eventually, Adam asks on what Nassar was doing here in DC. But that's when we switch over to Metro East Emergency Hospital, where we meet a doctor student named Malik. And currently, he's helping out some injured white supremacists at the hospital. Because when you're a doctor, you can't pick and choose who you're going to help out. You got to help out who's in, who's dying or who's in trouble. Regardless or not, that person's a piece of shit. Now, while Malik is doing his thing, Step arrives and informs Black Adam that this was the reason Nassar came to DC. He wanted to meet with Malik, but that doesn't really seem accurate because even just seeing how Malik carry himself, carries himself, very carefree with his wording and whatnot, why would any foreign political party leader meet with a medical student? Like, none of it makes sense. Eventually, Adam arrives at the hospital and meets with Malik himself, and he starts asking questions about Nassar and why he wanted to meet with him. But Malik doesn't have any idea on what he's talking about, and he even has an alibi because he's been here at the hospital for the entire day. Suddenly, Malik offers a check on Adam's arm, but Adam refuses, and from there he leaves, warning Malik that if he, if he finds out that he was involved, then there will be consequences. Because the truth of the matter is this. Sure, Adam and Nassar were probably not the best of buds, but if he's unable to provide detail as to who it was who assassinated Nassar, this will look really bad for Black Adam because people outside of conduct and inside will suspect him as a prime assassin. It's just not a good look and these sort of things can lead to civil war. Now once Adam leaves, the cops immediately show up to arrest Malik for questioning. Later in the back alley, Black Adam seeing his infection is spreading decides to heal with the powers of Shazam. However, the transformation is seemingly killing him and so Shtep rushes into the hospital and begs for Dr. Malik White's help. However, what's fascinating here is that the nurse tells Shep that there is that there is no Malik White that works here, because it turns out that White isn't his last name. But before we can find that out, we switch to the police station where the cops are questioning Malik's involvement with Nasser's death. And with unable to provide any solid evidence, the cops detain him, but he's apparently released by someone else, 
who offers him the opportunity to visit Conduct's consulate. Later at Howard University, Malik meets with his best friend Jasmine and tells her about all the crazy stuff that has been happening tonight, but she doesn't seem very interested in what he's saying. So obviously there's some tension between these two characters that we're just not made aware of yet. But once Jasmine leaves, Malik is immediately kidnapped and is sent to the back of the van where he is pushed through a portal, which sends him over to Kondok. From there, Shtep greets Malik and he lets him know as to why Nassar was looking for him. For Nassar, wanted a revolution here in Kondok, and he wanted you. He wanted Malik to lead it. And the reason for this is because Black Adam is dying, and Malik is his long-lost descendant. Thus, Black Adam wants to bequeath his powers of Black Adam to Malik. And that, folks, was the end of Black Adam, issue number one. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly means the world to me. And as always, I am your majestic sayer over at Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, but then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button. And also hit the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload. And so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number two? And what is your hype level for the Black Adam movie? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace.